around the world communicate for free. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. What's the number? One six. Please re-enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. Six four four zero one seven two. everybody this after this evening hi how are you okay on my tablet trying to, to get it, trying to bring it up. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Long day today. A lot of stuff Amen. going on. Amen. But God is good. And he's good all the time. Yes, he is. Okay, are we ready? we ready to get started? Okay, to God be the glory. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on the Living Bread Church of Grace and Hope, uh, Tuesday's Bible study. Uh, we still do apologize for not having Bible study on last Tuesday. We pray that you did read your lesson on compassion. It was a good lesson. I didn't get a chance to read it, but I am going to read it and because uh, I had a lot going on, but I know that it's, it's good. Is good, and if you hadn't had a chance oh, to yeah. read it, I hope that you do as well. And if you have any questions when we're on our regular Bible study that you want to ask about it, then do so, and we'll try to get the answers for you. Amen. To God be the glory. We are studying from Amen. precepts for living, precepts for living, and the annual commentary theme this year is principles for living in an unhinged world principles for living in an unhinged world and every time i read that the front of this book i just think about the election year totally an unhinged event in this world amen to god be the glory to god be the glory let us pray amen. our dear heavenly father we lord we just come before you now and Asking you, Heavenly Father, as we come to this lesson on friendships, help us to look in our lives and, and to see what we have that we call friends and whom we have that we call friends. And God, if they're not up to what they're supposed to be and, and if we're not up to what we're supposed to be as being friends to someone else, then Lord, do a new thing in us and turn us around Show us which way to go and what we need to do so that we can have true friends. And truly, Lord, we want to be your friend. We want to be a friend of God. Mm. So, God, we thank you yeah. and we praise you. We give you glory, thank Lord, you. as we get ready to study this lesson. And as I always ask, will the real teacher come? This we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Tonight's study is on friendship. Friendship. Tonight's study is on friendship. This lesson is a really good lesson on friendship. Some of us may know about this lesson and may have read it or studied it before, but if you haven't, 
then you in for a real treat about a friendship and a bond between two awesome young men. Amen. The bond of friendship. Focal verses are 1 Samuel 18th chapter verses 1 through 5 and chapter 19 verses 1 through 7. Our aim for change is by the end of the lesson, we will summarize Jonathan's plan to protect David. We're going to appreciate how the bonds of covenant friendship can endure the challenges of outside forces. And we'll be able to examine whether our own relationships reflect the honesty and loyalty God calls us to experience. And I hear Brother Gary is on uh, this afternoon. And Brother, Brother Gary, let's go with our In Focus. Yes. Janelle and Brianna became best friends during the first year as undergraduate study journal journalism. Janelle wanted to be a news anchor and Brianna Brianna was a promising producer. They were both hired at the T V station in their hometown. After college graduation, Janelle and Brianna loved working together and always had each other back. <clears throat> both personal, both pers personal, pers personality, and professionally in their hostile work environment, Janelle was amazing from the beginning and many of her co-workers felt threatened by her godly confidence and skill. Last year, Chanel was offered the chance to cover a big story about a new ultra-conservative candidate for government. The head producer was openly critical and harsh to Chanel effort. It almost seems like he purposefully picked her to cover the risk so he could set Chanel up to fail. Brianna saw what was happening and decided to do everything she could to help Chanel prepare for the interview with the gubernatorial the gubernatorial candidate thank you it was a difficult situation for Brianna because helping her friend would require extra time and energy in her already busy schedule in addition her support for for Janelle is also a test of her loyalty to the head producer who was very influential at the station. Brianna knew the head producer could make the rest make the rest of her days at the station difficult as he could as he found out. But she thought her friendship could with the friendship with Chanel was more important. Much much to the head producer this man, Chanel did a great job with the story and in favorable ratings with the network. How do you how do you determine whether to risk your own comfort for the sake of a friend or loved one? Yeah. Okay. Amen. Th amen. 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 Thank you very much. How do you determine whether to risk your own comfort for the sake of a friend or a loved one? How many of you have friends? 
that or someone in your life that you're very close to that you would risk your own comfort for? How would you determine, what would you determine to risk something for them or to make a sacrifice for them? Not just a risk, but make a sacrifice for them. How would you determine that? Anybody else? Anybody else? And why? And while y'all are thinking of something to say, let's, we're going to say good afternoon to our Facebook family. Uh, Marcella, Amen. She's on this afternoon on amen. Facebook, and Gary's on uh, the um, conference line. Margo, Amen. Margo Hill is with amen. us. Amen. Out of uh, Virginia. Amen. Uh, my sister Shami, she's on with us out of Maryland. Uh, the Reverend Betty Newkirk, Amen. she's on with us. Amen. From Atkinson. Amen. Amen. And also will be with us on Wednesday as the starter for our revival. Amen. To God be the glory. Sister oh, okay. Margie Amen. Spearman. Amen. She's with us out of Wilmington. Sister Laureate Com uh, Corbion, she's with us on Facebook as well as with us on our conference line. And um, and my sister-in-law, Rosa Randolph, she's with us too. And, and sometimes, and I don't know if she's on today or not, but uh, Sister Marjorie Spearman is on with us is on our conference line as well as on our Facebook. Uh, Amen. Also, Brother Garrett is on our conference line. <laughs> Sister Carbion, Sister uh, Marilyn, didn't I hear you? I didn't hear Marilyn. Yes, I I'm did. On. Okay. I'm on. Yes, right. Okay. To God be the glory. And I don't know if Margie, if you are on or not. Amen. But she usually do get on both. Amen. To God be the glory. So they gave somebody some time to think about it. <laughs> Would you sacrifice? I'm sinful by myself. <laughs> <laughs> would you sacrifice? What, what was your, I had to step away a minute. What was the question? <laughs> How would you determine whether to risk your own comfort for the sake of a friend or loved one, or sacrifice something for the sake of a friend of a loved one. How would you determine whether to risk your own comfort or not? Because I, I think that if this was your friend, your true friend, and you had been through thick and thin, you would risk it knowing that if the shoe was on the other foot, they would do the same thing. <clears throat> and... If you've got that relationship that you know that you would hope that they wouldn't do anything that, that's not right, they would what they would do would be good. Because if they had done something that, that, that was not right, then you would let them know because you would be a friend and you see them walking the wrong way, so you just let them know. But if y'all have got that bond, then you would risk it. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? 
Anybody else? Anybody else? Ecclesiastes says that two is better than one. I think it's in the fourth chapter that he says that. I think it's in the fourth chapter. That's Solomon. Solomon says two is better than one. I want to say it's the fourth chapter. Please, Lord, don't let me be lying. But about the cord, he's talking about two being better than one. And then he said that even in some circumstances, basically, three is is better. Three is better. That, But in most of your situations, that is two. And two is better than one. Two is if something is going on, two people can deal with something better than the one because two people will work together, should work together, should stand together on whatever is going on. If you have a friend, if you have a friend, and all of us have experienced having friends, we've also experienced having friends that has talked about us. All of us have experienced that. Friends who didn't mean us any good, laughed in our face, and all the time taking a dagger and twisting it in our backs when they got a chance. We've all at some point have experienced that. And if you haven't experienced that, keep on living. You're not, you're not being truthful. Keep on living. But when you have a friend, a good friend will stick by you and with you no matter what. They will be there for you. That's why sometimes when we marry, we think we haven't married a, a, a good person or a good partner. But when the rubber start to meet the road, you'll find out that what you thought about your partner wasn't true because when you needed them or her, they were right there for you. Sometimes you may marry a partner or be with a partner that walks away from you when the going gets tough. Sometimes we can sleep with someone and find out that after years of sleeping with that person, because we're married to them, that person turns out to be your worst enemy. I'm just going by what I've seen on TV shows now. I'm just going by what I've seen on TV shows. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, in some TV shows, they're supposed to be true that you look at. Some of them do. Some of them have true based stories. But a true friend, mm -hmm. a true friend will be there for you. Even if it means that they've got to do something wrong to support you. Because a true friend will always trust God with that situation. They'll trust God. I will go on the limb for you. I might be wrong for doing so. The situation that you're in may dictate me not doing this, but you're my friend. Mm -hmm. You're my friend. I'm going to let you know you're wrong, but I'm still your friend. And I will be there mm -hmm. to help you if I need to be there. True friendship. Because if truth be told, look how many times Jesus has went out on the limb for us. When we know we didn't deserve it, he still went out on the limb for us. When we was in our mess, 
all the way over our heads that we stepped in and caused. But Jesus was still, still there. Still there that's right. That's true. She sure was. I thank God for her. So, That's the, difference. the only advice I can offer you on that is seek him first with what needs to be done. And trust him that he will answer you and answer you with the right thing to do. Right Sister Carvion said, I guess I better ask Jesus first. <laughs> she said it kind of low, but I heard her. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I think sometimes that, that the Lord puts that special friend in your life and, and you, you know, <clears throat> get that bond. And when you're both Christ-like, you know, it makes it make for a better friendship. Yes. Yes, yes. God knows yeah. that that is the truth. That is the truth. That is very true. That is the truth. I've been in my life. Yeah. Brings to mind with what um, Mordecai told Esther when he needed her to go to the king. And when he let <laughs> Esther know, you better remember now, you a Jew. And he don't know you a That's Jew. That's right. He don't know you a Jew. And you better think about that he might have put you where you are for such a time as this. That's it. That bond bringing people together. Only God can only only God can bring that kind of friendship together. Only God can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jonathan. Jonathan, the son of Saul, the son of Saul. And we find out that Jonathan and David were the best of friends. It says that when Jonathan first met David, Jonathan just fell in love with David, fell in love with his spirit, fell in love with who he was. Jonathan, Jonathan, Saul's son. Go go ahead, sister. Call me on. He loved it. He he loved his spirit. He loved who he was, and they developed a bond and a friendship that even Saul could not separate. His own father. His own father. Don't let it tell you, you know, that good and evil. My Lord. My Lord. David was good. My Lord. And I was I was looking at past I was looking at uh the um more light on the text and, and somewhere in there it said that Jonathan loved David so much that he loved him as his own soul. Yes. That's deep love. Yes. Yes. The kind of love that God has for us. Yes. And I and I'm not gonna lie to you. This when I not when I first not when I read it this time because I because I understood. I understood. I understood the kind of love that Jonathan had. But when I first read this, I can remember reading and I, and I said, so God, are you saying that John, that Jonathan and David were gay? With this, with this kind of love? And I, I'm serious. That was, that was my first thought. Say what, say what, Marilyn? I did too. Until I got clarification because the way they describe the love that, that he had for him, you know, yeah. That's what you would think. Well, yeah. You know, and when I first read it, yeah, when I first like read this, regular, the, mm -hmm. years ago, when I first read it, 
I, that's what I thought. I, I'm, and I'm serious. I did. Until growing in the word and understanding the word and understanding that relationship, reading it over and over again in the years to come reading it and reading it in different translations to help me understand that they just right. had a good relationship a good relationship it and then like, and then like, go ahead it was like being in love with the lord yes the love that he had had for him was like the love he would have for the lord you know, yes, like it's something special about David, something truly special about him, something really special about him, and whatever it is that's special about him, I want to be a part of it. <laughs> like this, this boy is going far. He's 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 going a long ways, and I want to be a part of that. You know, yeah, nothing like my father. Nothing like it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Nothing like nothing at all. That man was so conniving, it was unbelievable. Oh, Saul was something else. He was something else. But remember, Saul as a king was not picked by God. Who picked Saul? The people. The people did. Yeah. The people did. Yeah. No, I don't want to say no more. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Lord, I tell you, this lesson has me going. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Goodness. We all know the background for the we all know the background for this lesson. And if you read first Samuel in in the beginning of the chapters and it talks about Samuel, it talks about how Samuel um was um come come to uh be a prophet for the lord we we understand that and we and he talks about david talks about david's childhood talks about david growing up and everything talks about david uh being around the king talks about david and goliath talks about david and his brothers and and his father talks about david being the shepherd boy while everybody else went to into the uh, israel's army david stayed back and kept the sheep how God protected him. All of that is in that in is in First Samuel. All that and leads up to this. Leads up to where we are tonight when we study about the friendship of Paul of Saul, of Jonathan and David. You know the friendship. Okay, let us start with verses. 1 through 5 from the 18th chapter of 1 Samuel and then friends covenant is crafted it's crafted amen after David had finished talking with Saul he met Jonathan the king's son there was an immediate bond between them for Jonathan loved David from that day on, Saul kept David with him and would not let him return home. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan sealed the pact by taking off his robe and giving it to David, together with his tunic, sword, bow, and belt. This is a powerful statement, too. Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it sex, uh, successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war, an appointment that was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike. Friends, covenant is crafted. David has just given a speech to explain to Saul who he is, where he comes from, what he has been through, and most importantly, how he has had faith in God. It would be much like David sharing a testimony of his triumph 
over Goliath, acknowledging that only God could have called the young shepherd boy from an unimportant family to have victory over the giant companion who had threatened the army of Israel. Jonathan is so moved by David's testimony of courage and faith that he felt like he was meeting his long lost twin. Jonathan had also single-handed gone to battle against the Philistines and seen God gave him triumph over them. King Saul is so impressed with David that he makes him a prince in his house. David moves from the sheep pasture to the palace in, in an instant. Jonathan was so moved that he felt like David was his kindred spirit and wanted to make their bond of friendship and brotherhood officially official by cutting a covenant to always protect and show love for one another. Jonathan then gave David the royal clothes off his back, prophetically acknowledging that God has, has called David to be the royalty alongside him. Jonathan himself was next in line for Saul's throne. David and Jonathan are young men who make a covenant of friendship and kinship with one another. Although they were not born blood relatives, they would have and protect each other as though they were one blood and spiritual brothers from that day forward. <coughs> Jonathan's love for David foreshadows the words and actions of Christ. Greater love had no man this had no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Mm. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Look how look look how God moved uh in the in Jonathan's life. Jonathan was the prince. He was the prince because his his father was the king. And Jonathan became good friends you know, spellbound by David. But Jonathan had no idea that David had been anointed. He had no idea. He had no idea that Samuel sought him out while his father was still king and anointed David to be the next king of Israel. Jonathan had no idea. Because Jonathan, as far as he knew, he was next in line. But look how God placed David right there in the palace. Placed him right in the palace. Friends with the prince. Friends with the prince. There in the palace, David is coming out. From being the shepherd. He's coming out. From watching sheep. Now he's in the palace. And he's learning. Whether they didn't even realize it or not. But David is learning. How to become royalty. But still. Learning how to stay. Humble. Humble. Right. Because he knew that Jonathan was the prince. And he was still subject unto Jonathan. Isn't God amazing? Totally amazing. Totally amazing. Saul had no idea. That David had been anointed. Anointed by God. Mm -hmm. 
Samuel sought him out because God sent him there, sent him to Jesse's house to anoint him. Jesse, I know most of your sons are gone. They're in the they're they're serving in Israel's army. You know. And even though we, I'm going to anoint, I'm, I'm here to anoint one. But for some reason, every time you bring one in here, this oil is not coming out of this horn. Mm. So when Samuel is about to go, you know, God said, oh, no, 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 no. Samuel said, do you have another son? Yes, I do. He's out there tending sheep. Well, you need to go get him. And when they brought him there, and he held up the horn over him, the anoint the the oil over him, it poured. It poured. Because it was meant for him. It was meant for David. It wasn't meant for it wasn't meant for Jonathan to become the next king. Mm. He, even though physically he was in line for it. It was for David. Yes. Yes. It was for David. When I read this 99 times, 99 times, not just this time, but 99 other times. And then that's when Marilyn, I understood the love. That's when I understood the love that Jonathan had mm -hmm. for him. Because Jonathan had no idea he would be next in line to become king. He had no idea David would be. David was going to be right. Right, right, right. But he freely, he freely gave it up. He didn't argue, hesitate, or nothing. And I was going to say that too. He, uh, Jonathan... Jonathan seemed to recognize who was going to be the next king because he gave up all of his royalties to David. Gave every, gave everything up. Yeah, everything. Gave every everything up. And 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 he did that. Recognize what God had already had in place. In place, and he also saw David's strength. And he probably said, why can't I have the strength? I'm, I'm next in line to be king. I don't even have the kind of strength. I don't have the kind of attitude. I don't have the for forcefulness that this man has. Jonathan saw where David could teach him something. The man who stood against a giant nine feet tall. Nine feet tall. He's the only one that's and just a kid, young boy, young man. And I said, God, I, God, you're just working so many. You, you, you know, I, I, I saw, I saw his hand after reading it ninety nine times, and then, and then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Lord, Jonathan was not intended to be the king after his daddy. If yes. you intended it for David. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Friends covenant is crafted. Shh. Crafted. I'm going to give you this, David. I'm giving you my royal clothes. I'm going to give you, you know, my father need to understand that you are my friend. You are my friend. And through all of that, David was still subject to, to Jonathan. It never said that he tried to overstep him. It never said he tried to, to be above him or, or you know, you're a weakling, Jonathan. You're a weakling. You need to be. It, it, it never said that. Mm -hmm. Nope, it did not. Nope. 
Okay. Anybody got any comments? I'm keeping my mouth shut because I heard this sermon about three weeks ago. <laughs> so we can't hear it now. <laughs> How you doing, Marge? <laughs> and Pastor uh, Phoebe is right on time. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Friends covenant is challenged. First Samuel 19, 1 through 3. 1 through 3. Saul not urged his Saul not urged his servant and his son Jonathan to assist David. But Jonathan, because of his strong affection for David, told him what his father was planning. Tomorrow morning, he warned him, you must find a hiding place out in the field. I'll ask my father to go out there with me, and I'll ask, and I'll talk to him about you. Then I'll tell you everything I can find out. Now that's a good friend. Mm -hmm. Friend covenant is challenged. Sometimes later, Saul called together his servant and Jonathan, his son, because he had become jealous of David's popularity with the people. Yeah. David yeah. has at this point led many successful battles against Israel's enemies and had become the talk of the town. Although Saul received the glory for the victories as king of Israel, David's mm -hmm. growing popularity had begun to make Saul so insecure that he tried to put David in higher rank, which meant riding out in front of troops and more likely to be killed. Saul was upset that despite his attempt to place David in harm's way, God keeps delivering and protecting his, his anointed. Saul plots with his servants and Jonathan, who all love David, to kill David. Jonathan, however, has made the covenant with David to protect him as though he was protecting himself, a relationship Saul no doubt knew about. Jonathan informs David of the plot and tells him to hide while Jonathan tries to talk Saul out of his murderous thoughts. The tension is so real for Jonathan between siding with his father, his own blood, or siding with his covenant brother and the will of God. Jonathan chooses what is right before God and protects his best friend, David. Mm. 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 David, you killed Goliath. You're a young man. I gave you my sword and my shield. It didn't even fit you. When you put it on, you couldn't even hardly carry it. You couldn't even hardly carry what you saw. That's how tall... Saul, Saul was a tall man, and when they picked him, it was like the people looked up and saw him standing over everybody and chose him as king. <laughs> That's pretty much how he got there. <laughs> and God told Samuel, go ahead on, go ahead on and on. The people chose him, go ahead on and anoint him. So can you imagine someone a little over six foot putting all their armor on someone that's probably not even five feet tall? To go out and fight a giant. Totally amazed when David came to him and said, What's wrong with what's what's wrong with you people? You know, God is our protector. Why why would you let this nine foot giant come and and try to manipulate you and frighten you and scare you? Y y God is in charge of the army. He's in charge of all of us, Israel. God knows everything. Yes, you gotta, we got to trust God. And if y'all scared and his brothers are saying, you know what? You need to go back home. Go back home and tend the sheep because this is not your business. And he went to Saul. I'll do it. I'll do it. And because he defeated him, then Saul places him. He places him in the palace. Not so much because of the relationship of his 
between him and his son, but because yeah, right. he defeated Goliath. Right. He brought glory. He brought glory to him. To him. And then the people mm -hmm. caused that tension. Yeah. yeah. Saul, you only you you only did a thousand, but David. By killing one man, he destroyed 10,000. Yeah. And this didn't set good with Saul. Didn't set good with him. Didn't set good with him at all. Not at all. And now he's got to try to convince his son, the prince, the next king in his mind. This is what happens when people come against you. You gotta kill them. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was trying. That's what he was trying to teach. Uh huh. <laughs> then he's probably upset because Jonathan chose David over him. Yes. That, that's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Jonathan now, wasn't not listening. Only did the people, not only did the people choose his own son choose. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That you you know that that that's something, that's that's something. These boys have have grown and had a good re and got a good relationship, and David never disrespecting, never disrespecting Jonathan, never disrespecting Saul, but now I'm ready to kill you because I allowed you to go fight the giant and you. Defeated him. He didn't even realize David didn't defeat the giant. God defeated the giant. Even David God. knew he didn't defeat the giant. Mm -hmm. He knew it was God that defeated the giant. He knew, he knew it was God that did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, you know, because the people said, Saul, you know what? You ain't worth nothing. Because that boy went out there and killed that big old man. <laughs> he done more than you ever done. He saved us. Now, I got to kill him. I got to get rid of him. I got to get rid of him because I think David did it because he wants to be king. This is in Saul's mind now. And Jonathan, you better help me. Because he's getting ready to take your place. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, that's what David, David is getting too much glory. He's taking all that glory from, uh, from, uh, from Saul. And, and it's, it's getting the best of Saul. Getting the best of him. And now I got to drive a wedge between him and my son because he and my son are so close. So I got to drive that wedge. I've got to pull them apart because my son need to understand why he needs to be destroyed. Because he's going to take your place. That's, that's what he was doing. He wants my place. If he wants my place, that means he wants your place. So we got to kill him. We got to get him out of the way. Mm -hmm. The pastor, he didn't even understand his relationship that his son had with God. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. They, uh, Jonathan had a better one with God than Saul did. Yes, Saul did. Yeah, because he recognized what was happening between David him and David and the kingship. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Friends. Friends. Jonathan said, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do the right thing. That you, David is my friend and I'm not going to let my daddy come against him just any kind of way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look out for my friend. Because through all of this, all this stuff that my daddy is telling me and, 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 and making me to believe that it's happening and it's not happening, David still has not disrespected me. 
David is still yeah. my friend. David ain't even talked against him. And he's doing this all the time to him. He never did. Mm -hmm. Never did. He chose to do the right thing. Jonathan chose to do the right thing. And let's see what this right thing is. Let's go to Friends Covenant is confirmed. Four through seven. bring him Saul was trying to put him moving him up in in his army so he could ride in the front hoping that in any battle that he would be killed and when he saw that that's not working <laughs> then he bringing bringing his son together and, and and all those around him we got to find we got to find a way to get rid of him we got to find a way to kill him you know and Jonathan couldn't take it anymore. No. Why do you want to kill him? Why? And bring it up all these good arguments as to why you shouldn't. Because Jonathan 
was being used by the Lord. Jonathan was being used by the Lord. It says when you're reading about him, when you're reading about Saul and David and David being in the house, mm -hmm. that when Saul's spirit got vexed, David played on his heart and it eased his spirit. That's in, that's, that's, that's okay. in the scripture of Samuel, that David played and that calmed Saul down. It calmed him down. Um, okay. You know, but now, because he went out there and killed this giant that, that I allowed him to do, and Saul, not thinking, not thinking God allowed him to do it. He thinking he did it. And now that the people are praising him and belittling me, I got to get rid of him. I got to get rid of him. And David is saying, no, dad, no, no. You want to kill this man for no reason at all. None at all. He hasn't done anything to you. He hasn't done anything to me. He hasn't done anything against the kingdom of Israel. So why would you want to kill him? Had to talk him out of it. And he listened to his son for a little while. When you read on, you'll find out it was for a little while. It was for a little for while. A little while. Mm -hmm. Because it started again. It started up again. He was trying to kill him. Read the book of 1 Samuel about David. Saul and Jonathan. And it tells us that Jonathan, Saul and Jonathan were killed. They were killed in the same battle. Saul and, and Jonathan was. The man that came and told David that Saul was dead and that he had killed him, David had that man killed because he said, you don't touch God's anointed. No matter how bad Saul was, David understood he was still God's anointed. And then he found out later that Jonathan had a son, Mephibosheth. And he brought that, little, that boy into his kingdom. And took care of him while he was king. Took care of his That's descendants. His family. Uh -huh. That's how much he loved Jonathan. That's how close they were. That's how that friendship was. That's how grateful he was. Mm -hmm. My daughter here. I have to step away. Excuse me. After this lesson... All of us need to take inventory in our lives and, and find out. Okay. Do we have friends? Do we have friends in our lives that we could trust that if anything happened, they would ever go to bat for us? And would you go to bat for them? Think about it. Think about it. I know Marilyn has been my friend for a long time, for over 30 something years, 36 years. We've been friends. There is nothing that she would need or go through that I would not be there for her. And I feel she would do me the same way. Likewise. And why we know is because we've been there for each other before. That's why we know. Yes. Exactly. 
You don't need a friend that can't help you, and you don't need to be a friend if you can't help them. That you can't help. That's right. This is a good lesson. Anybody got any comment before we close out? They don't come easy. Them friends that you can count on. Lord have mercy. That's true. That's true. And you know who you will count, who can count on you, but do you know who you can count on? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We got so many comments here. I'm going to read these real quick, and then we're going to do our prayer. Uh, Chame said... Jonathan and David had the compassion for one another. She also said, and God in love for one another also. And Sister Marjorie said, making a big difference when God is in the mix. God knows everything. All right. Give me a high five on that. Shame said, could also Saul feel like that David was taking away Jonathan's love from him, being a wedge between him and his son? No, I don't think that's what Saul felt like. No, Saul was, Saul was listening to the people. That's what blew his head up and messed him up about David. That chant, they were chanting that and it vexed him. It made him angry. It made him angry. That's how I see it, Shami. I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, having jealousy as well as towards David. Okay, that was the next part of it. Yes, that was the way... My best girlfriend, Sandra, and I was with each other. Okay. And and Sandra and Shame was close. And, and Shame could not come to go see Sandra when she was in intensive care. And I made that trip for her. I made that trip for her. And, uh, and she died. And she died. And that hurt Shame so bad because she had, did not get to see her. But God is good. God, God is good. God, God is good. All the time. Lord have mercy. He's good all. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, before we close out, I'm I'm going to say this that um I found out today I'm going to start my treatments as the Lord would have it, November the fifth, and. Um, prayerfully and hopefully JJ will continue if I don't feel like doing the Bible study studies he will continue to do them and if anyone if anyone say oh you okay you know what I would like to do the Bible study on, on Tuesday please by all means let him know I'm sure he'll be glad <laughs> he'll be happy oh, you know Jay does he gonna do all that stuff for you cause he's your rock <laughs> Well, but he wouldn't mind sharing it either. <laughs> How about that? He wouldn't mind sharing it. I'm sure he wouldn't mind sharing it. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And um, uh, God, God is good. We have so much going on today. Amen. So much going on. Uh, his brother Dale was taken to Duke today. The hospital sent him to Duke. They have a pacemaker put in, so we're going to be praying for him as well. Robin and Barry was here for a couple of days. They came down to see Dale when he was put in the hospital and, uh, through the emergency room and everything. They came down to visit, and they were on their way back today, and they should be getting pretty close to getting to Stafford, and, and that's why they're not on with us. They're traveling, so we pray to God for them for traveling mercies. Amen. Thank you all for your prayers for my nephew uh, and his wife, who uh, their four-month-old son, the Lord called him to glory at four months old. They never got to take him home from the hospital. Amen. To God be the glory. We're going to be lifting them up as well because God is good. God is good. Uh, Larry Grady, uh, others that are sick, Larry Grady that's in the hospital, uh, Hazel's other grandmother, as she calls her, <laughs> her other grandmother, uh, she's having a bout with cancer also. And they have taken her 
uh, to her house. Hazel mom, Christina, is taking care of her mom. She's got her home with her, and she's taking off work to take care of her while she's also taking uh, her treatments and everything. So God is good. God is good. God is good. He's good. All the time. All the time. He's good. Amen. He's good. And we thank him. We thank him. We thank him. We thank him. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, here we come before you again. Thanking you for another Tuesday. Thanking you for another wonderful lesson. And Lord, thanking you for this lesson on friendship. Help us, Lord, to look beyond our own faults. And Lord, see our needs. See our needs, Lord. See our needs for friends in our lives, Lord, that will be there with us through the thick and thin. But God, not just put friends in our lives, but put us in in somebody else's life to help them through the thick and thin and be their friend. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we just praise you. We give you glory for Lord there is no one like you. You are the maker and creator. You are the alpha and omega. And God, we thank you. The beginning and the end. We thank you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we, we just thank you. We thank you for each and every one. We're praying, God, for our revival, Heavenly Father, on tomorrow night and, and, and Thursday night and Friday night. God, we're asking, Lord, just bless. Lord, just bless only the way you can bless. And however you bless the Living Bread Church of Grace and Hope in our community, Heavenly Father, we're going to be satisfied because we know, we know that it will be from you. So, Lord, we just ask your blessings. We bless, ask, God, that you continue to bless our sick and our shut-in. We ask that you bless those who are diseased, those who are sick with ailments. And, Lord, bless the caregivers, Heavenly Father. Help them to stand firm and strong in doing what they're doing. And, Lord, help us all to be grateful. Grateful that we're being taken care of and grateful that someone is taking care of us. God, we thank you. We thank you, God. We praise you. We give you glory, O Heavenly Father. We give you glory. Lord, there is none like you. None like you. None like you. None like you, God. And Lord, we just stand. We stand firm. We stand firm. Believing in you. Asking you for an increase of faith. Asking that the Holy Spirit... Continue to work within us to help us to be more and more like Christ. Lord, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 And uh, those of you who will not be able to attend, we will be on Facebook uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. We'll be on the Living Bread page of Grace and Hope will be on that page, our church page, and also will be on my page, uh, Phoebe Jordan. We'll be on Amen. my page as well. Amen. So we pray that you pray with us every day, every day, because our re revival theme is to revive us again, the revival in us, by us, and through Jesus. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Everyone be safe. Everyone be until we meet again. And just know, if nobody else loves you, God does. Yes, he does. He does. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Have a good week. Have a good time. All right. All right. See y'all. Good, good night, everyone. Good night.